No one said anything about this thing. <laughs> yes. Someone made that. I'm gonna read you two poems. So nice to be here, so fun to be with friends. It's lucky. Feels very lucky. First poem is called um, Burial. Burial. And I have to ask you a question. Who in the audience has done something um, with their placenta? Some people plant it with a tree. That works sometimes, sorry. <laughs> Burial. You're right, you're right, the fertilizer's good. It wasn't a gang of dullards came up with chucking a fish in the planting hole, or some wid midwife got lucky with the placenta. Oh, I'll plant a tree here. And a sudden flush of quince and jamming up for months. Yes. The magic dust our bodies become cast spells on the roots about which someone else could tell you the chemical processes. But it's just magic to me. Which is why a couple springs ago, when first putting in my two bare root plump trees out back, I took the jar which has become my father's house, and lonely for him and hoping to coax him back from my mother as much as me, poured some of him into the planting holes. And he dove in, glad for the robust air, saddling a slight gust into my nose and mouth, chuckling as I coughed. But mostly he disappeared into the minor yawns in the earth, into which I placed the trees, splaying wide their roots, casting the gray dust of my old man evenly throughout the hole, replacing then the clods of dense Indiana soil until the roots and my father were buried watering it all in with one hand while holding the tree with the other straight as the flag to the nation of simple joy of which my father is now a naturalized citizen, waving the flag from his subterranean lair. The roots curled around him like shawls or jungle gyms, like hookahs or the arms of ancestors, before breaststroking into the xylem, riding the elevator up through the cambium and into the leaves where, when you put your ear close enough, you can hear him whisper, good morning, where if you close your eyes and push your face, you can feel his stubbly jowls. And good Lord, this year he was giddy at the first real fruit set and nestled into the 30 or 40 plums in the two trees, peering out from the sweet meat with his hands pressed against the purple skin like cathedral glass. And imagine his joy as the sun wizarded forth these abundant sugars, and I plodded barefoot and prayerful at the first ripe plum swell and blush, almost weepy, conjuring some surely ponderous verse to convey this bottomless grace, you know, oh father, oh father kind of stuff. Hundreds of hot air balloons filling the sky in my chest, replacing his intubated body, listing like a boat keel side up, replacing the steady stream of water from the one eye, which his brother wiped before removing the tube, keeping his hand on the forehead until the last wind in his body wandered off, while my brother wailed like an animal. And my mother said, weeping, it's OK. It's OK. You can go, honey. At all of which my father guffawed by kicking from the first bite buckets of juice down my chin, staining one of my two button-down shirts, the salmon-colored silk one, hollering, there's more of that, almost dancing now in the plum, in the tree, the way he did as a person, bent over and biting his lip and chucking the one hip out and then the other with his elbows cocked and fists loosely made and eyes closed and mouth made trumpet when he knew he could make you happy just by being a little silly and sweet. Mm. 
this is called To the Fig Tree on Ninth and Christian. Tumbling through the city in my mind without once looking up, the racket and the lug work, probably rehearsing some stupid thing I said or did, some crime or other. The city, they say, is a lonely place until, yes, the sound of sweeping and the woman, yes, with a broom beneath which you are now to the canopy of a fig its arms pulling the September sun to it, and she has a hose too, and so works hard, rinsing and scrubbing the walk, lest some poor sod slip on the silk of a fig and break his hip, and not probably reach over to gobble up the perpetrator. The light catches the veins in her hands when I ask about the tree. They flutter in the air. She says, take as much as you can to help me. So I load my pockets and mouth, and she points to the stepladder against the wall to mean more, but I was without a sack, so my meager plunder would have to suffice. And an old woman whom gravity was pulling into the earth loosed one from a low-slung branch, and its eye wept like hers, which she dabbed with a kerchief as she cleaved the fig with what remained of her teeth. And soon there were eight or nine people gathered beneath the tree, looking into it like a constellation, pointing, do you see it? And I am tall, and so good for these things. And a bald man even told me so. When I grab three or four for him, reaching into the giddy throngs of yellow jackets, sugar stone, which he only pointed to, smiling and rubbing his stomach. I mean, he was really rubbing his stomach, <laughs> like there was a baby in there. It was hot. His head shone while he offered recipes to the group using words which I couldn't understand. And besides, I was a little tipsy on the dance of the velvety heart rolling in my mouth, pulling me down and down into the oldest countries of my body where I ate my first fig from the hand of a man who escaped his country by swimming through the night and maybe never said more than five words to me at once, but gave me figs, and a man on his way to work hops twice to reach at last his fig, which he smiles at and calls baby. Come here, baby, he says, and blows a kiss to the tree, which everyone knows cannot grow this far north, being Mediterranean and favoring the rocky, sun-baked soils of Jordan and Sicily, but no one told the fig tree or the immigrants. There's a way the fig tree grows in groves. It seems to want to hold us. Yes, I am anthropomorphizing, goddammit. I have twice in the last 30 seconds rubbed my sweaty forearm into someone else's sweaty shoulder, gleeful, eating out of each other's hands on Christian Street in Philadelphia, a city like most, which has murdered its own people. This is true. We are feeding each other from a tree at the corner of Christian and Ninth. Strangers may be never again. Thank you.